as on every Good Friday, the cross stands in the middle of our celebration today. Just as the cross stands in the middle of the life of every disciple of the Lord Jesus. Today, this Friday that we call good, is about the cross and what the cross means, what the cross has accomplished, and what it means in your life and in my life today. In a few moments, we will venerate the cross. We will solemnly come forward and reverence the cross of Christ. Why? What is so central about the cross? Well, we could say many things about the cross and, and easily and readily agree. We know that the cross is the instrument of our salvation. We know that the cross was the means by which God would reconcile the world to himself through the death of his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The cross and what happened on the cross is the very means of our salvation. Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, the eternal Word who is with the Father from all ages in the human flesh that he took from the womb of his most holy mother, mounted the cross in order to save us. Save us from what? To save us from death. To save us from our sins. To save us from even eternal punishment. I think I have made reference almost every year on Good Friday to that beautiful Byzantine chant, that chant that comes to us from the eastern lung, if you will, of the church. By death, he conquered death. And to those in the grave, he has granted life. And this, all my brothers and sisters, happens on the cross. And that is why the cross stands at the center of our celebration today, because that is what you and I have gathered here to remember today, our salvation in Christ Jesus the Lord. And so the cross, far from being seen as a thing of shame, of disgrace, as many in Jesus' time would have seen it, after all, the crucifixion of Jesus was the punishment for a criminal. It was shameful. It was execution. But it is not for us who believe a sign of shame and disgrace and defeat. It is the cross of victory. It is the glory of the cross that we celebrate today. Because from the cross, Christ is victorious. He reigns as King Supreme from the cross. It is his most glorious throne. He lays himself on the altar of the cross and it becomes for us life and salvation. That's what the cross means for us in terms of our eternal salvation. But what does the cross mean in your life today 
tomorrow? What place does the cross have in your day-to-day living of your gospel faith? Well, I think we're all taught, right, that we have to bear the cross in our own lives. Jesus himself said it, didn't he? If you wish to be my disciple, you must take up your cross each day and follow me. Those are hard words for us to hear, but we can accept them. We can accept that as the crosses come our way in life, and as we endure those crosses, as we carry those crosses, we know that that somehow is a means for us to achieve life. We know that somehow the crosses that we are made to bear in our life are a participation in the cross of Christ. And our sacrifice united to his brings about salvation, brings about new life for us. And so in our own lives, we could see the cross, yes, indeed, difficult to bear, but nevertheless, victory, life, salvation. And we know that God can bring good things even from the sufferings and the crosses that we are made to bear in this life. And so we could perhaps get to that level of understanding of the mystery of the cross, not just for what it means in terms of the the mystery of salvation in Christ, but what it means for us in our own life, that we are called to endure the cross, united to Christ, and we receive grace and new life. But let's take it one step further in terms of what the cross means in our daily life. Can we learn to embrace the cross? Not just endure it, not just suffer the crosses that come our way in life, but embrace it. Embrace the cross. Cling to the cross and see it as blessing, as something wonderful to endure. Now that takes something else. That takes a deeper kind of faith, not to just endure the cross in union with Christ, but to embrace it with love, even, dare I say it, with a certain sense of supernatural joy, knowing that it is the means not only of our salvation, It is the means of our sanctification in this life. It is the real means of our joy and peace and happiness, even in this world. Now that's hard to embrace, but it is the truth. In the cross, willingly embraced, even, dare I say, joyfully embraced, we find true happiness. We find true peace. We find a joy that is not an emotional, superficial kind of human joy like we might experience with the good things that happen in life. But it is a deeper joy that comes with dying to ourselves, dying to our own will, dying even to our own pleasure and what this world can offer us. 
This is for the believer. This is for the believer. Because for the unbeliever, the cross seems like a folly. St. Paul himself said it to the Jews, the cross is a scandal. The Messiah would die on a cross unthinkable. To the Gentiles it is foolishness, nonsense. And that's the way the Gentiles, if you will, of our own day look at the cross. It's, it's ridiculous. It's silly. It means nothing. It makes no sense. Don't bother with it. What good can possibly come from it? You see, the world of unbelievers embraces the world, embraces pleasure, embraces my own way, my own will, embraces my own satisfaction, embraces whatever I can get out of life. And in the end, brings nothing but sadness because we can never satisfy. We can never fill the void in our hearts. We can never fill that longing for something, that longing. What is it a longing for? It's a longing for happiness. It's a longing for peace. It's a longing for love. And nothing, no one can fill it except the crucified one. The crucified one fills the boy. And if we can get to that point, and I'm not saying it's easy. In fact, I'm not saying that I'm anywhere close to it myself. But if we can get to that place where we can not just endure the cross, but really embrace it and see it as blessing, as life, as peace, as happiness, as joy, even as it hurts, then we will achieve the holiness, the sanctification to which we are called. And in the cross is victory. We gather in a certain atmosphere and sentiment of stark sobriety today, simplicity, even sadness, as we venerate the Lord's passion. But we know that tomorrow night and on Easter Sunday, the heaviness of heart that we feel today will give way to a joy that our hearts cannot contain, the joy of new life and resurrection in Christ. But through the cross, the cross forever stands as the symbol of our faith, as the symbol and the living sign of God's love for us, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. And so my brothers and sisters, today as you come forward to venerate the cross of our Savior, ask the Lord for a special grace, a special grace today. First, to be able to endure the cross in faith and not give way to despair, but even more, to embrace it. As you kiss it, as you bow before it, embrace its full meaning in your own life.